All right, we're back. We're on page 196 of math analysis. We're talking about hyperbolas. It's parametric equations. Um, we know, we basically know a lot about them already because we, we kind of like delved into them uh, at some point. And we know from circles and ellipses that we're always using sine squared plus cosine squared equals one or cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, depending on convenience. Um, with that in mind, which two identities are we going to use for hyperbolas? So it's a little trickier because we don't actually have a Pythagorean identity that has a minus in it unless you rearrange. Um, but we have two that could conveniently equal one if we rearrange them. So uh, we're either going to be using secant squared minus, tan well, one here, let's write it the way we have it memorized, right? So we have it memorized as tan squared plus one equals secant squared, which means that secant squared minus tan squared equals one. Okay, or we could use the other one. So the other one is that one plus cotan squared equals cosecant squared. I don't know why I like put the one in a different place. I put the one in a different place because when you originally derive them, the one is in a different place. But I don't even know like what order I originally did them in. So like, I don't know why I hold to that, but I kind of do. Uh, so this would be cosecant squared minus cotan squared equals one. Okay, so because, so this is, this is like an important warning, so it's in red. Because of the minus, you cannot just switch secant and tan. You can't just switch cosecant and cotan because secant minus tan does not equal tangent minus secant um, or whatever, the squares. Uh, on the other hand, like for sine and cosine, you can just swap them because sine squared plus cosine squared, cosine squared plus sine squared are the same thing. So you cannot just switch them. Uh, so watch out for that. Cannot just switch. So you can't tan. Um, See, so how can I denote that that will make sense? You can't just like swap secant of t, tan of t. So you can't do it. You have to use uh, the co-functions, right? So you can say secant squared minus tan squared, or you could swap for co-functions, say cosecant squared minus cotan squared, but you can't switch the secant and the tan. You can't switch the cosecant and the cotan. I'm, a, I'm kind of of the opinion that if you choose on your own to use cosecant and cotan, you're like kind of a monster. Like, why would you do that? Like secant tan, ooh, dropping my iPad, holy cow. Um, secant tan is the way to go. It was like some kind of karmic thing right there. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Um, so since X goes first, in this case, if X goes first, it must go with secant when we write our equation. So I'm just gonna write them because I think we've done enough things like this. So we'll go with the center, three, negative five. X came first, so it has to go with secant. So I'm gonna say plus uh, 16 secant of T. And then Y came second, so it's gonna go with tangent plus 25 tangent of T. Or you could go with, so like you can't really change much, three, negative five. We well, could change this to minus if you want. It doesn't make a difference. But this is going to be cosecant. And then this will be cotangent. Co oh, what? I forgot my 25. I saw the 5 and I was like, I guess I dealt with that. But I didn't. Cotan. Right? So either of those, totally good. Um, over here, same idea. But y is first, which means y has to go with secant. And then when I write these, and I think it's sort of generally a good idea. I usually just deal with the y thing first. So the center here is eight, negative seven. And then it's gonna be plus, what, what is that? 18 squared? I feel like it's 18 squared. 20 minus two squared, 400 minus, multiply them together times two is 80 plus four. Yes, okay, so I'm gonna say plus 20, nope, 18. <laughs> So I do all that and then I get it wrong. 18. Um, so this has to be secant because it goes first. Secant, and this will be plus 13 tangent. Uh, we don't really do a lot with these. Like, I don't know. Um, they're obviously very strange, right? Because you get two different branches. 
the domain that you choose will determine what branch you're getting. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that, but I don't think we don't really do stuff with it. So I don't really think it's worth too much time in this regard. So we're going to kind of gloss over it, but, um, if you experiment around with GeoGebra for like a little bit, you'll, you'll work it out. I believe in you. Plus 13 plus 18. So what can we switch? Switch secant to cosecant and switch tangent to cotangent. And there you go. So that's like a finer point of hyperbola that doesn't really exist with ellipses and circles. Like with an ellipse and a circle, it really matters what direction you're going, where you're starting, all that stuff. That's definitely important. For hyperbolas, for us, it's just like write the equation. If you're just writing the equation, um, then you're going to run into the scenario where um, secant and tan matter, right? So uh, when looking at the parametric equations for a hyperbola, how do you determine just by looking if the hyperbola is horizontal or vertical, right? So if you think about it, so first of all, what does the horizontal one look like? Horizontal is like uh, x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals one, right? That's horizontal. Vertical is gonna be y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared. So remember, a and b don't switch, it's, it's y and x and y that switch. Um, and then x always goes with h, y always goes with k. That's always a chance for you to make a silly mistake. So try to avoid that. Um, so to figure out if it's horizontal or vertical, look for secant. Um, secant or cosecant, I guess. Or cosecant. And then, uh, because that determines it, right? So if, if secant is with x, all right, let's do this. If secant with x, then it must be that x comes first because it's gotta be secant squared minus uh, tan squared. So it would be horizontal. If secant's with y, it means that y must come first because it's gotta be secant squared minus tan squared. So it would be vertical. All right. So the rest of this page, just kind of a summary. It's not even really a great summary. Super hard to, well, not super hard, but it's it's hard to come up with the, uh, like a generalization of the parametrics for an ellipse, I guess. Because like you have to come up with some name and you can't really just use like A and B because for an ellipse, A should always be greater than B. So what I do is I just call it radius one. It's like the X radius and radius two, the Y radius. Um, otherwise, uh, not really not really much going on here. This is all stuff that you know, hopefully by now, because we've just done like hours and hours of this stuff. I'm going to cut this video here, come back in the next one and do some more. Uh, and I will see you there.